Welcome to this section where we would be talking about numeric data types and conditional execution. We'll try and look at the numeric types including boolean data type and we'd also look at executing code based on conditions. Let's get started with the basic numeric data types. Earlier in the course, we created variables of this kind. Number is equal to 5. Value is equal to 2.5. The 5 here is a integer. Integers represent whole numbers. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 or minus 1, minus 2. In Python, integers are represented by a type of int. So the class for this particular thing is int. If you type in type of 5, you would get int. All the whole numbers, all the integers are represented by a class int. One of the most important things that you need to understand is that in Python, there are no primitive data types. What does that mean? That means that every value that you see in a Python program is an object, is an instance of some class. That's the reason why we are able to do type of 5 and see int over here. In subsequent sections, we'll understand what is a class, what is an object, what is an instance. For now, the most important thing for you to remember is behind every value there is a class. In Python everything is an object which is basically an instance of a specific class. Now let's look at 2.5. 2.5 is a floating point value. So if I go ahead and type in type of 2.5 what would I see? You'd see it's of type float. So values of this kind are all floats. You have an integer value followed by a decimal value. You have a decimal point. So these are floats. When you perform an operation between two integers, there is a chance that the result of the operation is a float. So you can see 5 by 2, what is the result? It's 2.5. If I do 4 by 2, even then it's of a type float. So if you do a division operation among two ints, what is the result? The result is a float value. I can type in 4 by 2 and you can see the result. The result is 2.0, which is a float. In the earlier section, we looked at various operations that we can do over integer values, right? So we did 1 plus 2, which is 3. I can define two variables i is equal to 10, j is equal to 2, and I can do i plus j or i minus j. I can do i divided by j and i star j. So these are all typical operations, addition, subtraction, division, multiplication. One interesting operation we saw earlier was i mod 2. What is the reminder when i is divided by j? All the operations that we looked at until now can also be performed on floating point values. So if I have a value 1 with a value of 4.5 and a value 2 with a value of 3.2, then I can do all the above operations on them as well. Value 1 plus value 2, value 1 minus value 2 value 1 divided by value 2 and value 1 mod value 2. You can do all these operations on floating point values as well. One of the things you are observing in here is the fact that value 1 minus value 2 is written in 1.2999998. So this is not really an accurate thing. That's one of the things you need to remember always about floating point values. Typically, if you are doing any highly sensitive financial calculation, you will not use floats to represent your values. You will use decimal when you want highly accurate calculations. The operations can also be performed 
between a integer and a float so i can say i plus value one or i can do i minus value one or i divided by value one as you can see the result of an operation between a int and a float is always a float in this video we looked at the two basic numeric types int and float all whole numbers in python are represented by int other languages have types like short long nope in python you don't have any of those and we use float to represent values with decimals we saw the basic operations you can do between ints between floats and also combining both int and floats until the next video bye bye